Back by popular demand, I give you the cheapest oceanfront rentals in Florida, the West Coast edition. Now in my last video that I did about the oceanfront rentals on the East Coast, I asked you guys to make sure this video did well by giving me a bunch of likes and comments and views of course, and you totally came through. That video got a lot more likes and comments than most of my videos usually get, and a lot of you even asked for me to do the follow-up and here it is. So a couple things I just want to mention, I'm going to get into this a lot quicker than I did last time, but I'm using the same exact criteria as before, two bedroom, two bathroom, $2,500 a month, and the building must be on the ocean, meaning on the sand or right across the street from the sand, assuming there's no other buildings in front of it. That's the same exact criteria I used last time. And after I get through the list of the 10 rentals, I'll give you my thoughts and the process on how it all went looking for these units because I have some surprising things I want to share with you guys afterwards. Now just in case you're watching this and wondering why I'm making this list or what video I was talking about before that did so well, I'll put a link to it right here in case you didn't see that video. That video was all about the cheapest oceanfront rentals on the east coast of Florida and this is the west coast edition. Number 10 is St. Pete Beach. This one's coming in at $2,500 a month this unit seems to be a typical two bedroom, two bath, you know, roughly the, a regular size unit. It does look pretty nice in the pictures, I have to say, mostly remodeled. Furniture is definitely not my taste, but I really like this kitchen here because that kitchen is nice and open. It's got granite countertops, stainless steel appliances. The bedroom is pretty tastefully put together. You know, it's nice to have those his and her sinks in there. This looks like a pretty good rental. And this building is right on the beach, as you can see here in this picture. From the balcony, you can sort of see the beach, but you can definitely just go right out to the beach from this place. Number nine, Venice, Florida. This one comes in at $2,400 a month. And as you can see right at the beginning here, it has a direct ocean view. My biggest complaint with this place is that it's very small for a two bedroom. I think it said here, yeah, 912 square feet. So that is very small for a two bedroom, two bathroom. Um, the unit itself is also very, very mediocre, very plain looking. The building itself doesn't look like the greatest building in the world. And to be honest, that was like the best I could find in this area over there. Almost everything else in this area is way more expensive. And this was like the best you could do for 2400 in this area. So this must be a pretty expensive spot on the West Coast. Number eight, Navarre, Florida. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but sounds, sounds right. Navarre, Florida. This one is $2,300 a month, and it's coming in at 1,500 square feet, which is pretty big. I mean, that's a huge two-bedroom, really. And I can tell this is one of those areas in Florida that has those beautiful white sandy beaches just by looking at the pictures. It's nice that it has its own laundry in the unit there. You got tile floors, so that's good. I don't see any carpet so far. Looks like there's lots of windows. You also got a direct ocean view from the balcony. I always love that. You know, you got a, a walk-in closet here. It seems like this is a pretty good value for the money given the size of the unit, the price, the direct ocean view. These are all things that are usually pretty tough to come by in this price point to live on the ocean anywhere. So I would say that's a pretty good deal. Number seven, we got Crawfordville, Florida. I've never heard of this town before, but this is definitely one of the coolest and most unique properties I ended up finding on the west coast of Florida. And you see it's like this huge house that's on stilts. You can tell it's brand new basically on the inside. I don't know about the outside or when it was built, but it looks very, very modern. The whole place looks like a really cool spot to hang out. And it even has its own elevator there in the house, so that's pretty sweet. And um, there's also something really cool about this house that I noticed. The beach here, obviously there's a, a beach view from everywhere in this house, but the beach here is like a natural beach. We're talking like grass and sand that goes right up to the water. And I didn't even know there were places like that in Florida that still existed, let alone like somewhere you could live on the beach like that. So that's pretty neat. So this is a very unique listing for sure. Number six, we got Clearwater, Florida. This place I was hoping was gonna show up on the list because I've been here and you see the beaches there are very beautiful. You got white sandy beaches, nice and clear water. 
The unit itself looks pretty decent. You know, it's got an ocean view. It's pretty spacious at a little over 1,300 square feet. It's furnished and it looks mostly modern, at least, you know, within the last 10 years modern. It's got its own washer and dryer. Definitely not bad to be right on the beach, guys. 2,200 a month. Number five, Bel Air Beach. This is another place in Florida I've never actually heard of before, but the price is good. And it looks like that this place might be a sort of short-term rental. And I didn't want to put any short-term rentals on this list, but I'm not sure because there was no description. I'm just going by the price here. And it doesn't say that it's like 2,000 a week or anything like that. It says 2,000 a month. But a lot of the other listings I found nearby are more expensive and they're saying they're short term. So this one could be, but I'm assuming it's it's not because it doesn't say that. But there's not much to say about it other than that it's very modern. And it is on the ocean, but it doesn't have an ocean view. You're kind of like looking at the street here. The furniture is just eh, whatever, you know, but it, it seems like a pretty nice place for 2000 a month on the ocean. Coming in at number four, we got Marco Island, Florida at $1,995 a month. And this place is 1,154 square feet. And right away when I see this unit, I was just thinking like retirement city, very old looking. And no offense to you if you are old or you're looking to retire in Florida. It's just that I'm a younger guy and I wouldn't want to live in a place like this. And I also wouldn't want to bring a client to come look at a place like this because I just feel like when you see something this old, it just feels kind of like depressed, outdated, and it doesn't get people excited to move into a place like this. But it is in an oceanfront building, and in all fairness, this was like one of the only ones I could find in this entire area in the budget. So that is also a plus because, you know, for the price over here, it seems like this is a pretty good deal. But the unit itself is just, mm, you know, Number three on the list, we got Sarasota, Florida, coming in at $1,850 a month. And this unit is also very big, almost 1,500 square feet. And I've had a couple people ask me about Sarasota in the comments lately. And this is a very like up and coming area with newer, younger residents in that area of Sarasota. So a lot of young people are moving to this area. So the west coast of Florida, this is a pretty hot spot. So if you want to move to a place on the west coast that is kind of like there's a lot of things to do and it's a fun city, Sarasota is definitely a good option for you. But this apartment itself, you know, is just kind of whatever, sort of like the last one. It's not very exciting. You can tell everything is pretty old, probably at least 20 or 30 years old here. And there's a lot of carpet. It's very ugly. <laughs> You know, if I have to be honest, guys, I'm just being honest. But you know, this is literally the best I could find and there was nothing else in Sarasota that even came close to this price being on the beach, okay? So I think we're lucky to have even have found this one, but you know, obviously you get what you pay for. So 1850 a month is not a lot to live on the beach, but this apartment itself actually doesn't look so great either. And I'm just giving you my honest feedback. Number two, Panama City Beach. And I have to say, I was super happy to see this one come up on the list because I've been wanting to visit this area of Florida for a very long time and I still haven't gone. And I promise you, once all of this stay at home stuff is over, I'm gonna take a trip over there and I'm gonna be taking a trip to a lot of different places to show you guys more of Florida. But I'm super glad I saw this one here because it's $17.95 a month. The place is 1,280 square feet. It's like a little house on the water. And this place is kind of like one of those examples, like I said before in my last video, where you have the buildings, the street, and then the ocean. On the actual ocean, there are no places in this area of Panama City Beach. You know, there's just sand and the dunes, and then you have the street and buildings. So this definitely counts as beachfront. And it's cool that it's like a little house or townhouse kind of a setup. It's not in a condo, so that's nice. The place looks a little bit dated. You know, they try to give it like a beachy looking vibe, which is cool. I like the colors and stuff, and it's nice that it has that little balcony off the bedroom, stuff like that. Definitely not my choice of decorations, but to have a house on the beach, guys, for $17.95 a month, that is an excellent deal. Very, very good deal.
Guys, before we get to number one, I just wanted to jump in here really quick and let you know that I'm working on a few different ways where you can help support this channel because a few people out there have been asking me for this. And the number one way you can support this channel right now is number one, keep watching more of the videos. The other thing you can do is if you're shopping online like so many of us are right now, is sign up for Rakuten. If you've never heard of it, I've put a link down in the description below to a video I did a while ago explaining all about how it works. But basically, it's a cashback website that gives you cash back on all of your online purchases. And from right now until May 1st, it's a limited time offer. They're giving everybody that signs up through this link a $30 instant cash back credit. The only catch is you need to spend $30 on their website. So go ahead, make that account. It's completely free to you. And then you'll be able to get your $30 as soon as you make a $30 purchase. Back to the video. Now coming in at number one is Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Another place that I have never heard of until today. And it's kind of coincidence because in my last video, the most expensive one was 2,500 and the cheapest one was 1,500. And similarly on the West Coast, it's also the same situation here. The most expensive one was 25 that I had on my list and this one comes in at $1,500 a month in Fort Walton Beach. The unit's a little on the small side for a two bedroom but still livable at 1,035 square feet. It is right on the sand here as you can see. It's like a big complex basically. Um, looks like they have like a breakfast hall. They got a gym, a sauna, hot tub area, tennis courts, huge pool area little walkway out to the beach. It looks like they don't have washer and dryers in the apartment there. They have like that laundry room. The kitchen's kind of old. That carpet is terrible. And I know a lot of people here in Miami hate carpet and they won't even rent or buy a place that has one. Well, buying's different, you know, you can always remodel. But renting, usually carpet's a deal breaker. I would say the same thing, just because you got sand trekking through there, it's hard to clean it up. The carpet heats the place up and Florida is hot. You just don't want to have carpet here, you know? The less carpet, the better. But it's got a balcony, it looks like. I don't know if this is a catwalk or a balcony. And you got some water view from there, so that's not bad. The apartment complex is not bad for $1,500 a month, okay? I've seen much worse than that here for $1,500 a month, so I would say this isn't bad, especially for a two-bedroom, two-bathroom. Now, since you made it this far, let me go over my methodology for finding these listings. And I wanted to save this till after the listings because I know last time I took a little bit long to get into the listings by giving you this huge explanation up front. So let me start with that I went all the way from Marco Island, Florida, which is all the way down here on the southwest corner of Florida, all the way up to Pensacola, Florida, which is like the westernmost beach town in Florida before you get to Alabama. So I definitely scoured the entire west coast of Florida looking for these rentals. Now to my surprise, going all the way from Marco Island up to about Venice, Florida, I couldn't really find anything in the price range, guys, nothing. I'm not, I'm talking not even one place that was $2,500 a month or less for a two bedroom, two bathroom on the ocean. So I was pretty surprised to see that you really couldn't get anything for this price on the ocean over there. I wasn't actually expecting it to be more expensive than the East Coast over here on Florida. I always thought that it was more expensive here, but it turns out this stretch of area from Florida, from Marco Island to about Venice, Florida, is very, very pricey to live on the beach over there. And one thing I need to mention is I didn't include any short-term rentals. There were some places here and there that were in the budget, but they were all short-term rentals. We're talking just a couple of months and that's it. So I only included places on this list that were long-term that you could potentially live in for at least a year. Another thing that I noticed about looking for oceanfront rentals on the west coast of Florida it's very hard to find a rental on the ocean there within the budget, but if you just go a block or two away from the ocean, it's very easy to find something affordable within your budget. And I kept the budget at 2,500 for a two bedroom, two bathroom, mainly because out of all the rentals and things I've done here in Miami over the years, that's like the typical budget for most people looking for a two bedroom. 
Sometimes, of course, there's always people that will spend more, but I would say like 70% of the folks out there that want to get a rental around here, that's like their, their main sweet spot for the budget. So I kept it at that because it's very reasonable and affordable for most people. But it's very tough to get a rental on the ocean in this price range on the west coast. On the east coast, it seemed like there was a more of an abundance of places to pick from in this price range. And on the west coast, it was a lot more difficult to find something. But if you're willing to go just a couple blocks away from the beach, you have a lot more choices than you would ever find on the east coast. And we're talking really good deals. Like, I found houses for less than $2,000 a month, three bedroom, two bathroom, literally just a couple minutes away from the beach in a real house, you know, not a condo or a townhouse, a single family home. So that was pretty neat. The other thing that I didn't know about Florida, and chances are maybe you don't know either since you're watching these videos from me, is there's a stretch from Clearwater Beach all the way up the west coast of Florida, pretty much until you get to the Panhandle basically, and there's like no beach. There's water there that touches the land, but it's like a marshy, swampy area, and there's literally no beaches between this entire area. And this is a big chunk of Florida we're talking about here, as you can see on the map. And I really wasn't expecting that either. The cool thing about me making these videos about Florida for you, even though I know so much about Florida already, I'm still learning new stuff as I go. So this is pretty neat for me to learn things along the way and share it with you guys. I also tried to keep this video as short as I could because I know the last one was a little bit long but it does take a while to go through all these listings. But to be honest, if you're still here watching, then you should probably just go and watch some more of my videos right over here and keep hanging out with me because clearly you like hanging out with me and I like hanging out with you too. So I hope to see you over there.